मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर विवेक वर्मा एंड आई एम प्रिंसिपल कंसल्टेंट एंड हेड ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक ऑनकोलॉजी यूनिट एट मैक्स हॉस्पिटल्स सो टूडे यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग वॉट आई एम आई गोइंग टू टीच एज अ ऑर्थोपेडिक ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट हाई संतोष गुड इवनिंग सो सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी अ वेरी कॉमन टॉपिक एंड दैट इज अबाउट द टर्म विच वी हैव बीन यूजिंग फॉर लॉन्ग लाइक जी सी टी टेन एंड शीट और पिगमेंटेड विलो नोड्यूलर साइनोवाइटिस विच कॉमनली प्रेजेंट्स लाइक अ स्वेलिंग इन आवर हैंड और फीट एंड मेनी अ टाइम्स वी आर बैफल्ड अबाउट वॉट टू डू सो जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकेंड आई स्टार्ट माई स्क्रीन शेयरिंग राइट सो टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन दिस टॉपिक एंड विच इज अबाउट जी सी टी ऑफ टेन एंड शीट सो आई मैसे दैट आई हैव टू करेक्ट दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी because this terminology was used uh, quite long back and still now very commonly we get confused hearing different terms like uh, tenosynovial giant cell tumors or pigmented villo nodular synovitis so the correct terminology which is there is ts gct this is tenosynovial giant cell tumors which encompasses all the different types so let us see what we are going to learn today so first and foremost i always say in my talks that uh it is not just about reading to pass the exams but finally we are going to become a consultant in future and we are going to deal with the patients so we have to understand the biology very well we must go deep into the pathological aspects so that we know what is exactly that is causing the disease process then only we can start thinking about the treatment plan how we are going to uh, formulate the plans or what uh, right now you all are in say general surgery you must be in first or second or third year but later on you might go into different sub specialties like oncology or say urology or any specialty where you have to go deep into the subject to become a master of it so it all starts with the basics of understanding the biology which involves the etiology the pathogenesis the genetics involved second and what we commonly face the problem is about how to clinically approach a swelling like that and what are the different options we have in the treatment plan for these tenosynovial giant cell tumors so let us go one by one so like i started with this like what is the current nomenclature of this disease so this is the gct of tendon sheet that was commonly called since long time and even now any swelling in the hand arising from the tendon from the fingers or toes people call it gct tendon sheet that is not wrong that is fine the other name that we use commonly when it is present in the joints like in the knee joint when there is hypertrophy of the synovium it is called villo nodular synovitis or pigmented pvns that is the common terminology that has been used pigmented villo nodular synovitis but the current uh, nomenclature is the tenosynovial giant cell tumor so this is the current nomenclature so when it started probably the first time jeffe described it in uh, 46 around where uh, uh, this was uh, considered a reactive pathology because of some trauma or some irritation they it tends to grow but over the time it was realized that it is not not just a reactive etiology but there is a neoplastic nature of these type of growth so uh, this was this has now been uh, proved that these type of tumors that tenosynovial giant cell tumors are not just a reactive process but it, it is a neoplastic etiology so if it comes to neoplastic etiology what is the genetic alteration that we must be aware so there is a chromosome 1 deletion that has been found in uh, most of the cases of uh, these uh, uh, tenosynovial giant cell tumors and what does it do so it starts proliferation of the histiocytes and the fibroblast so it may involve any site in the body and it can affect any age 
but the most common age group where we see is in the third and fourth decade and we'll go one by one uh, where does it arise from if we look at the terminology the tenosynovial giant cell tumor so in the term itself you will be able to understand let us just uh, take an example so we'll take two examples one around the knee and the other say around your finger joint so where it is quite commonly seen so this is your metacarpal if this is your hand this is the metacarpal and then your phalanx which has three bones proximal middle and distal phalanx then there are tendons which are there say suppose this is the sagittal view you're looking from the sides and if you look at my finger we can move it so there are tendons the extensor tendons and the flexor tendons the extensor tendon extends our finger the flexor ones allows flexion so if the tumor is arising somewhere from the joint so it may arise from any of these structures you know the joint capsule is formed by the synovial layer which allows for gliding movement free movement so it may arise from the synovium it may arise from the tendon so this is this is the tendon and it, the tumor may arise from the part of the tendon sheet it may also arise from the bursa so usually bursas are uh, lining layers which allows for free movements and it may uh, get affected causing bursitis so so the origin can be from any of the structures what you need to understand are few basic concepts. What is intraarticular? What is extraarticular? Many times students get confused about it because when we deal with the location of these tumors, their behavior, and when we have to plan their treatment, we must see where they are arising from. What do we mean by intraarticular? So two words. You know, articular means the joint. So whenever the tumor is arising from where from the joint, it is called intra-articular within the joint. And extra means suppose the same tumor arises from away from the joint, then it is extra-articular location. Like if we see this one, this is an extra-articular location, whereas if tumor is somewhere here in the joint it is intra-articular location so we need to be very clear about it because our treatment plan and process will vary depending upon the location of the tumor broadly there are two forms the localized form and the diffuse form of TSGCTs tenosynovial giant cell tumors as the name itself suggests the localized forms where a symbol, single uh, swelling will be there at one of the extra-articular sites, whereas the diffuse ones where you see commonly in larger areas affecting the joints, which may be seen in uh, knee joint, commonly hip joint, or your shoulder or elbow. So just to present you with this example, so this is our, the diffuse one, what you see is the knee joint, you see the distal femur and the proximal tibia and in between you see all these high point and signals are there on these images which shows it is a diffuse form of tenosynovial giant cell tumor. On the other hand you see this uh, this is the of our finger the MRI image and you see a lesion which is there on the palmar aspect of the middle phalanx and the uh, proximal phalanx so this is something called a localized form where there is a single entity which is progressively growing and on the other hand what you see on the knee joint or any other joint it is a diffuse form which starts affecting the joint so how do these swellings present 